this is the third uh, video on reviewing for the end of the year final and so we're going to talk about some more kinds of trig problems. So the first ones here we have finding find the exact values uh, with the given domain. So we're going to have to consider our domains here. So sine of x equals negative square root of 3 over 2. Now if we ignore the negative sign for a moment we know the value in quadrant 1 where sine is positive square root of 3 over 2 is going to be at pi over 3. So that is our reference angle. Now we know that sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So with a reference angle of pi over 3, we can get to that quadrant 3 angle as pi plus pi over 3 is going to be 4 pi over 3. So that's one angle that is in our domain because it's between 0 and 2 pi. And to get to the quadrant 4 angle, we can get 5 pi over 3. So its reference angle also is pi over 3. Going in the other direction, we can get to this quadrant 4 angle as a negative pi over 3. And we can get to the quadrant 3 angle through an angle of negative 2 pi over 3. So notice we're going two trips around the unit circle, uh, going from 0 to negative 2 pi in the negative direction, and from 0 to 2 pi in the positive direction. Each trip around the circle generates two angles, and so we're going to get a total of four angles that are answers to that. Now here again, ignoring for a moment the negative sign, just looking at the reference angle, we know that the cosine of pi over 4 is going to be square root of 2 over 2. So that is our reference angle. Now we know that cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So using our reference angle of pi over 4, we can get to the quadrant 2 angle, and that's going to be 3 pi over 4. So that's one of our solutions. We can get to the quadrant 3 angle uh, through an angle of 5 pi over 4. So there's our second angle going around the unit circle from 0 to 2 pi. Continuing, going all the way to 4 pi, we will add 2 pi to the answers we just got. And 2 pi is 8 fourths, so that will be 11 pi over 4. And adding 8 fourths to the 5 pi over 4 will make that 13 pi over 4. So again, as we saw before, two trips around the circle, 0 to 2 pi, and then continuing on to 4 pi is going to generate two angles each trip around the circle for a total of four angles. I'm going to slide this over a little bit. So trying to first look into quadrant 1 for our reference angle. So we're going to ignore the negative sign for a moment. Now there's a couple ways we can do this. We can think of tangent as being sine x over and bump that with my arm. So that's sine x over cosine x. And if these are known angles, to get the square root of 3 must come from square root of 3 over 2, which will take a 1 half to get rid of the 2 and the square root of 3 over 2. So the angle whose sine is square root of 3 over 2 is the same angle whose cosine is 1 half and is the angle we're looking for. And so that is going to be pi over 3. Now, alternatively, you could draw an angle, and let's just put it in quadrant 1, and say that since tangent is opposite over adjacent, then we could do Pythagorean theorem to get the hypotenuse, and now get to the same place we did earlier. The sine of this angle would be square root of 3 over 2, opposite over hypotenuse, and the cosine of that angle would be 1 half. So now we have a reference angle of pi over 3, and we know that tangent, which is sine over cosine, will be negative in the quadrants 
that have x and y values that are different in sign. So that's going to put us into quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So our reference angle is pi over 3. So that's going to give us an angle of 2 pi over 3. So we can say 2 pi over 3. And down in quadrant 4, that angle is going to be 5 pi over 3. Now, we can also get to a negative tangent by going in the, since we're going to go from 0 to negative 2 pi, that would be a negative pi over 3, and around in the negative direction would make that be a negative 4 pi over 3. So there are our four angles where tangent's going to be a negative square root of 3. Okay, now we're going to do the same kind of idea, <clears throat> except now we're going to always have our domain is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. So we're going one trip around the unit circle, and these are not going to be known values, so we're going to have to use our calculator. So make sure you're in radian mode, and we are going to take the inverse sine of a negative 0.57. So second sine, negative 0.57, and I'm getting on my calculator a negative 0 0.606. Now that's not between 0 and 2 pi, so we're going to have to make that be a positive angle. So we're down here in quadrant 4. This is our negative 0.606. Now we also know that sine is negative in quadrant 3. So if we think of that as more of a reference angle, this angle in quadrant 3 is going to be pi plus a 0 0.606. So I'm going to go pi plus, or you can go minus the negative if you want to just use the same value that's on your screen, and that's going to be an angle of 3.748. There's our quadrant, 3.748 is our quadrant 3 angle, and to get that angle in quadrant 4, we can think of it as going all the way to 2 pi, and then subtracting, or the 0 0.606 or adding that negative 0 0.606. So I'm going to go 2 pi plus, and I'm going to go up and capture that negative 0 0.606, and that looks like 5.677. 5.677. So there are our angles where sine is going to be a negative 0.57, and we're between 0 and 2 pi. So, similarly, we're going to, on our calculator, take the inverse cosine of a negative 0.82. So, second cosine, negative 0.82, and I'm getting 2.532. So, that's, I'm going to call that an x, is 2.532. Now, we know that cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So the angle we got off our calculator is that quadrant 2 angle, which is one of the ones we want. Now, this angle we can think of as a negative, point, negative 2.532 plus 2 pi. So I'm just going to go 2 pi and then minus that 2.532, and that's going to be 3.751. 3.751, that's our quadrant 3 angle that goes to there. So there are our two angles between 0 and 2 pi, whose cosine is a negative 0.82. So, Again, we're going to start by taking the inverse tangent of a negative 2.1. So 
So second tangent of a negative 2.1, and that's going to be a negative 1.126. Now an inverse tangent, just like with a sine, is going to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So this angle that we got off of our calculator is a quadrant 4 angle. That's the negative 1.126. Now we know that tangent is going to be negative in quadrants 2 and in quadrant 4, but remember we want positive angles. So thinking of this as a reference angle, to get a quadrant 2 angle, what we want is to take pi minus the 1.126, which is the same thing as pi plus that negative 1. So I'm going to go pi and then plus and then capture that negative 1.126 that's on my calculator screen. And so we're going to get 2.015. That's going to be our quadrant 2 angle. Then our quadrant 4 angle uh, we know it's going to be a negative 1.126, but we need a positive version of that. So I'm just going to add 2 pi to that negative number. So 2 pi plus, I'm going to go up and capture that negative 1.126 that's on my calculator screen. And that looks like 5.157. 5 5.157. And there's our quadrant 2 and quadrant 4 angles. Okay, let's see if we can solve some equations. These were tough the first time around. Let's see if we can sort that out. Now, we notice that we have only the sine function. So we have only one trig function there. So we're going to get them on the same side of the equal sign. So I'm going to subtract 2 sine x. That's going to leave a 2 sine x plus square root of 3 equal to 0. We're going to get our sine x by itself. So we'll subtract that square root of 3 to the other side. We'll divide by 2. And now we want between 0 and 2 pi what are the angles where sine is negative square root of 3 over 2? So in quadrant 1, ignoring the negative sign, the reference angle is going to be pi over 3. Sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. With a reference angle of pi over 3, that's going to give us 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And those are our answers. Now, next equation has a different strategy because we have uh, a square in here. Since there is nothing to really factor, I'm going to get the squared term by itself and then square root both sides. So we're going to say secant squared x is equal to 4 thirds. Now, here's where the tricky part is to remember when you square root both sides, you want all possible solutions. So that is going to give us plus or minus 2 over the square root of 3. Now we know that a secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if we take the reciprocal of both sides, we're going to get cosine x is going to be a plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. So we want all the places between 0 and 2 pi where cosine is going to be either a positive or a negative square root of 3 over 2. So cosine is going to be positive in quadrants 1 and 4 and negative in quadrants 2 and 3. Our reference angle is going to be pi over 6. So that's going to be pi over 6 in quadrant 1, 5 pi over 6 in quadrant 2, 7 pi over 6 in quadrant 3, and 11 pi over 6 in quadrant 4. So again, the, the special strategy here was when we square rooted both sides, and I bumped it with my hand again, we want to get that, I'm going to bring my pen back up, we need that 
plus or minus. That's the key. Okay, next one. Now here what we see is we have only cosines, but we've got a quadratic. So we have to think here like an Algebra 2 student, and we're going to make our quadratic equal to 0, and then we can do our box and diamond, or however it is you may do your factoring. And I think what we want is the plus 1 and minus 1 to look like that. And so now these two multiply to be 0, so either 2 cosine x minus 1 is 0, or cosine x plus 1 is 0. So solving the first equation, we're going to get cosine x is a half, and between 0 and 2 pi, that's going to be a pi over 3 in quadrant 1, and a 5 pi over 3 in quadrant 4. Solving the second equation, we get that x cosine x is negative 1 only at pi. So our final solutions are going to be those three angles. Okay, now, kind of related to the one we just did, uh, we have a quadratic, but here we see we have two different trig functions. So what we want to do is trade one of these in for the other. There isn't a good uh, equivalence between sine x and a cosine because they're to the first power. But we do know from our favorite trig identity that if we solve for a cosine squared x, that is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So we will replace that cosine squared x by a 1 minus sine squared x. So now we have only sines. So we can distribute here. And then we want to, because we have a quadratic, we're going to bring everything to one side of the equal sign. I like to make the squared term be positive. So I'm going to add the sine squared x to the left side. Then there's the minus 3 sine x. And then we're going to subtract the 2 over to make that equal to 0. So we can do our box and diamond. Let's practice that. So let's see, that's going to be a negative 4 sine squared x. And the middle term is a negative 3 sine x. So we want two things that multiply to be negative 4 sine squared and add to be a negative 3 sine x. So I think that's going to be a negative 4 sine x and a positive 1 sine x. So then we do our box. And so we're going to put our 2 sine squared x in one diagonal, the negative 2 in the other. And then we'll put in our negative 4 sine x and sine x in the other diagonals. On the first row, we have a common factor of 2 sine x. That means we need that to be a sine x to multiply to be the 2 sine squared. And 2 sine x times a negative 2 will get us the negative 4 sine x. Sine x times 1 will be sine x. And to check the two time, negative 2 times 1 is the negative 2, so we're in business. So that's going to be a sine x minus 2 and a 2 sine x plus 1. Now those multiply to be 0, so we're going to try to set each of these equal to 0 and then solve them. Uh, unfortunately, when we set sine x equal to 2, the biggest sine can ever be is 1, so that isn't going to give us any solutions. But on the other side, we all get sine x equals negative 1 half. Now the reference angle, sine is a half uh, when x is pi over 6. Sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So with our reference angle of 
pi over 6, that is going to give us 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 as our solutions. All right, we're getting there. Now, the next one, uh, the tricky part of, let me back up again. So the, the special strategy was to notice that you had two different trig functions, but we could trade the squared one, the cosine squared in for a one minus sine squared x, and then get a quadratic that we could factor and solve. Now the next one, the tricky part is to recognize the two x. So that means our domain that's from zero to two pi for x, that's saying that x is um, greater than or equal to, let me try that again, so x is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 2 pi, so if we multiply through by 2, we can see that 0, that 2x is going to go all the way to 4 pi. So let's get our cosine, our cosecant by itself, and then we'll use the fact that we have that 2x. So we have cosecant at 2x is equal to a negative 2 over square root of 3. Now cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So when we take the reciprocal of both sides, we're going to get sine 2x equals negative square root of 3 over 2. So sine is a negative square root of 3 over 2. The reference angle is pi over 3. We're looking for our quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 angles. So that's 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. But that's only going around the circle once. Because of that 2x, we're going to have to go around the circle twice. So adding 2 pi, which is 6 thirds, makes that 10 pi over 3 and 11 pi over 3. Then we'll divide through everything by 2, and we will get 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3, uh, 5 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, which is a 5 pi over 3, and 11 pi over 6. So we get four answers because of the 2x, which is going to make us go around the unit circle twice. Notice our biggest angle, 11 pi over 6, still gives us x values that are between 0 and 2 pi. Now the hardest of all is this last one. So we have two different trig functions, but neither one of those is squared, which would we need in order to trade one in for the other. So because we don't have a squared term and we need it, we're going to square both sides. When we do that, we're going to make a note to ourselves that we're going to have to check our solutions at the end because we may introduce some extraneous solutions. Now we have struggled all year with squaring out a binomial here. The left side is going to be sine squared x. But the right side is going to be first one squared, twice the product, plus the second one squared. This is where a lot of mistakes occur, because I see a lot of cosine squared minus 1 or cosine squared x plus 1, neither of which is correct. Now we can trade like we did on the earlier problem. We can trade in 1 minus cosine squared x, which is, I bumped it again, so 1 minus cosine squared x is the same thing as sine squared x, and so we have now created a quadratic that has only cosines in it. So I'm going to bring everything to the right side. So adding the cosine squared to the other side makes 2 cosine squared x, We've got that minus 2 cosine x, and subtracting 1 means those are going to drop out. We can factor a greatest common factor of 2 cosine x, leaving behind a cosine x minus 1. Since those are equal to 0, we can set each of those equal to 0 
and then try to solve those. So dividing by the 2 and seeing that cosine x is 0 when x is pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. So that's going to give us those. Now we're going to have to check those in a moment. Now cosine x is equal to 1 only at 0. Now because we squared both sides we're going to have to check this back in the original. That is in our sine x equal to cosine x minus 1. So if we plug in pi over 2 then we get sine pi over 2 is cosine pi over 2 minus 1. Sine pi over 2 is 1. Cosine pi over 2 is 0. Uh, but 1 is not equal to negative 1. So that means pi over 2 must be extraneous. Well, let's try 3 pi over 2. So now we get sine 3 pi over 2. Uh, equal to perhaps cosine 3 pi over 2 minus 1. So sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and that is true. And so 3 pi over 2 is going to make it into our list of final solutions. And then we'll try a 0. So we have sine 0 equals cosine 0 minus 1, sine 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, so 0 is also a good solution, and those are our solutions. Those are tough, tough problems. A lot of steps in there. Squaring both sides, replacing a squared term with one equivalent to it, factoring, solving, and then checking solutions at the end. All right, very good.